Close your eyes, focus on the breath. Know when it's coming in, all the way in, and when it's going out, all the way out. Try to stick with it as long and as continuously as you can. This principle of continuity is really important in the practice. The practice is like a protection, like a fence around the house. And if the fence covers only part of the house or only part of the yard, then it's not really offering protection. You want protection that's all around. This is an important thing to think about right now, because yesterday was the last day of the rains retreat. It ended this morning at dawn. And there are a lot of people who make special vows that during the rains retreat they're going to do good in a special way. And what happens is they make, make it to the finish line and collapse. You know, okay, that's enough goodness for this year. And wait for another nine months for the goodness. Well, that's like having three months of goodness and then nine months of who knows what. And it doesn't really offer continuous protection. Make another example. It's like having your resistance up to disease. Because it's not that disease comes in from outside and affects everybody the same way. Sometimes just one little tiny germ outside can move in on somebody who's got very low resistance. And that one little germ can cause an awful lot of trouble. Other people with good high resistance, they can go into a germ-filled environment and not pick up anything at all. And the meditation is that, way. It's, it's that sort of thing. It's you're building up your resistance. You're more mindful. You're more alert. You have more concentration and discernment. So you notice what's happening in the mind. As soon as the least little bit of thing comes in, you've got it. The least little thing comes out of the mind, you've got it. And it doesn't happen just three months out of the year. It happens all the time, all around the year. So you want to keep your resistance up all around the year. So try to think of it this way, that the practice here is your protection. And it's not like that you're doing good to chalk up brownie points. You're keeping up your protection. As the Buddha said, the Dhamma protects those who practice it. In other words, your being generous protects you from all kinds of things. Being virtuous protects you from all kinds of things. Meditating in particular protects you from all kinds of unskillful mental states. And so you want to keep your protection up as much as you can. Otherwise, you let your guard down. It's just when you let your guard down, that's when the germs come in. And they don't have to be very many of them. Just a few can come in and wreak all sorts of havoc inside your system. Because not only are you letting them in, you're also you're welcoming them in, it seems, sometimes. So you've got to raise your resistance. Raise your resistance to lust. You might want to con contemplate the body as a part of your meditation as well. Look inside the body, what's in there that's really attractive. If you took all your organs out and put them on the floor, you'd run away. And yet when they're all nicely sewed up inside the body, you're okay with it, and yet they're still there. Always keep that in mind. With anger, you might want to develop thoughts of goodwill, both for yourself and for all the people around you, realizing that we have to live together, we can't live alone. And so we have to be able to forgive one another. As the Buddha said, there are two kinds of fools in the world. One is the fool who makes a mistake and would admit it, and the second fool is the one who someone apologizes to and doesn't accept the apology. So you don't want to be either kind of fool. And so you have to realize, okay, that you need your goodwill. Because if you don't have goodwill for all beings, you're going to start acting on unskillful intentions, and there you are. You've set yourself up for trouble. So these are the ways that you protect yourself. And then you try to develop more mindfulness and alertness to protect yourself against delusion. So that whatever comes up in the mind, you know it for what it is. You try to keep this protection going all the time. It's like keeping your insurance payments up or keeping your health up by making sure that you always follow a healthy regime. So just because the rains retreat is over doesn't mean that the time for goodness has ended. And the goodness has nothing to do with time, as the Buddha said. It's a galiko, timeless. That whenever you do it, whenever you give rise to the causes for goodness, okay, they're going to be the results. They may not come right away, but as long as you keep on producing the causes, they're going to have to give the results at some point. That's not the case that you get more goodness by doing it in the rains retreat rather as opposed to outside the rains retreat. This habit we have, or this custom we have of making vows for the rains retreat, that's basically to get you up to speed. Now that you're up to speed, you want to continue at that speed. Don't lose the momentum you've got.